Hello, friends, and welcome to our program. This is Limitless Life. My name is Larry Hutton, and we are going to take some more limits off our lives today. <laughs> Thank God I tell people all the time this is not a religious program. This is a relationship program with a living, real being by the name of Jesus that wants to live inside us and live through us to give us the kind of life everybody dreams about, the dream life, the kind of life Adam and Eve had before the curses came into mankind, but the, the second Adam, or the last Adam rather, uh, Jesus came along and he restored mankind back to the position in the garden before the fall. That is everyone that accepts Jesus. So when you accept Jesus, you get put back into a garden state of being. You can actually exist even in a terrible world that all hell's breaking loose all around you and you can exist in a garden state of existence. I mean, you can literally love your life. I'm loving life. I've been loving life for years because my life is in Him, in Jesus. In Him I live, in Him I move, in Him I have my being. It's all about the real Jesus, not the religious one, not the one that I grew up in church hearing about. It never changed me. When I finally learned how to live in Him and let Him live through me, I'm living the dream. I don't have down days, don't have stress-filled days, don't have depressed days, discouraged days, don't have get-my-feelings-hurt-filled days, <laughs> don't have bad temper, fly-off-the-handle days. Listen, I had plenty of those days before I learned what I'm talking about. Plenty of those days, just like everybody else. But you can actually exist in what some people call a utopia state of being. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have peace and joy all the time. Even if all hell breaks loose in my life, I will walk right through that and fear no evil. I'll walk right through that. I'll walk by faith and not by sight. I'll walk right through that in victory, even though it seems like it's a mess. But I'll walk right through it and use the peace of God and use the joy of God and use the self-control of God and use the gentleness of God and use the goodness of God and use the love of God and use all the fruit of the Spirit that's been given to us and I'll walk in victory. I wanted to encourage you one more uh, time today because every day this week I've given you a scripture before we get back into our normal teaching and we'll get back into our normal teaching here in just a few moments. But again, let me give you another scripture to encourage you. All of us need encouragement. Uh, I'll real quickly reiterate the scriptures I've given you this week already just to uh, strengthen you, encourage you. Uh, if you're fighting depression or discouragement or hopelessness, those kinds of things, God doesn't want you living that way. And so on Monday, I gave you Isaiah 41.10, which says, don't be afraid, I am the Lord. I'm with you. Uh, don't be discouraged. I'm your God. Uh, I'll strengthen you. I'll help you. And then on Tuesday, I gave you 2 Chronicles 32, verses 7 and 8. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or dismayed, for there's more with us than there are with them. Uh, with them is the arm of the flesh, but with us is the Lord. He will help us and He will fight our battles. On Wednesday, I gave you Joshua 1, 9. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then yesterday, I gave you 1 Chronicles 28, 20. Be strong and of good courage. Do it. Do not fear or be dismayed, for the Lord God is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. The, pro, the one I want to give you today is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 15. And it says this, Listen, all of you Ju Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, Thus says the Lord to you, and, and we know if, it's, if God's saying something good to them under the new covenant, it belongs to us and even better, right? So if God says this to them and it's something about not fearing and not being discouraged, and we don't have to either then, right? So he says, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of the great multitude. Don't be discouraged and don't get in fear. Just because your problem looks like a great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but whose? But God's. The battle is not yours. And this is what faith is all about. Is faith, of course, Hebrews tells us, faith is a rest. When we rest, 
then God takes care of the battle. When we rest, we get to walk right through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil, for God's with us. Just like it's saying here, don't be afraid because of what you're seeing. The battle is not yours, but God's. In fact, skip down to verse 17, for you won't, you won't need to fight in this battle. You won't need to, let's bring that into the new covenant. You won't need to fight. You'll just need to fight the good fight of faith. In other words, the fight of faith is stay in rest with what Jesus has already done for you. He's already won the battle for you, already gotten you the victory, and now you, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So you won't need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Do not fear or be discouraged. Tomorrow, go out against your enemies, and the Lord is with you. It just gives you boldness, gives you confidence, gives you assurance that I don't care what today brings. I don't care what they do in the government. I don't care what the economy does. I don't care what Wall Street does. I don't care what they do at the workplace. I don't care what it, I'm going to walk by faith not by sight. Wow. So let's get back into our series then that we started months ago. Today uh, is the end of our 42nd week. Today will be my 210th lesson. So I've taught 209 lessons of this series so far, but it's not really a series where you're talking about a particular subject. What we are uh, talking about is a uh, series that covers many subjects. But if you, if you title the subject, I call it the ABCs of true Christianity. But that ABCs of true Christianity covers a lot of subjects, so it's really not one subject. That's why today will be my 210th lesson. So I've divided this into three parts, part A, part B, and part C. ABC, the ABCs of true Christianity. Part A is what God has made you. Part B is what God's given you, and part C is what God's called you to do. The first six weeks, I covered 23 things uh, that God has made you. The next 26 weeks, I covered uh, um, 23 things that God has given you. And then the last 10 weeks now, we've been teaching part C of the series, and that's what God has enabled you to do. Our foundation text has been the end of 1 John 4, 17, as he is so are we in this world. Also, 1 John 2, 6, we can walk even as he walked. So let's continue part C today, what God has enabled you to do, and then we'll pick it up here next week as well. Part C, what God has enabled you to do. Remember, part C is based on part A and part B. Part A is what has God made you. Part B is what God has given you. So who you really are and what you really have then helps us understand what we can really do. And that's part C, is what God has enabled you to do. Number one, He has enabled you to live free from sin or walk free from sin or not sin. We found out verse after verse after verse that we do not have to sin. If we do, thank God we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus, but we found out we don't even have to yield to sin. So you can live free from sin. That means you can walk in your righteousness. Number two, you can keep your life from falling apart. You don't have to let your life fall apart and then put it all back together again like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> that Humpty Dumpty, uh, is, that'll, that'll date you. Probably a lot of kids today don't even know who Humpty Dumpty is. But anyway, you can keep your life from falling apart. Number three, you can love everyone all the time. Doesn't matter how they treat you, doesn't matter what they say, doesn't matter what the situation is, you can love everyone all the time. That means you can live in love and walk in love. Why? You're a love being and you have the love of God. Number four, you can overcome everything in your life that tries to overcome you. Whether it's spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, maritally, whatever it is, you can overcome everything in your life that tries to overcome you. And then number five, you can control your body. And that's the one that we've been talking about the last couple of programs. Let's go back to Galatians 5 and go back to the very end, the very, the very last fruit that's mentioned in verse 23. God has given you the fruit of King James says temperance. We know that means self-control or self-restraint or abstinence is what it means. We, we also quoted Thayer's uh, Greek lexicon, which says it's the one who masters his desires and passions, especially his sensual appetites. Sensual appetites would be the appetites of the senses, touch, taste, uh, smell, hear, and see. 
And so all these temptations have something, or, or I should say it this way, all these physical senses um, are connected in some way to the temptations that come into our lives. Or I could say all temptations are in some way connected to our physical senses. So your physical senses, taste, touch, smell, hear, and see are some way, in some way connected to the temptations that you experience in life. We already talked about taste. We already talked about touch. We already talked about smell. We already talked about here. We were talking about the physical sense of sight and what your eyes see uh, that affects your sensual appetites. Last program, we, we were in Proverbs 4, where God said, Attend to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, don't let them depart from your eyes, in Proverbs 4, 21. And then verse 23, he warned us, Keep your heart with all diligence. Out of it uh, spring the issues of life. And then in verse 25, Let your eyes look straight ahead. So we're talking about using God's self-control to control what we look at so we don't look at the wrong thing. Uh, it says here, look straight on. Did you know that you can't walk a straight path if you don't look straight on? I mean, if you've tried that before, I remember when I was hiking part of the Appalachian Trail with my daughter, Rachel Boyce, and, you know, you walk along this and you have to be careful because some of it's narrow and some of it's really steep, steep. So you know, when, you, when you're on a flat trail with, you know, if you fall either way where it's flat and open, it's not going to hurt you. But if you're on this steep trail, you better be looking straight ahead because you look this way and all of a sudden you can walk that way or you look this way and you can walk that way. <laughs> so look straight ahead. In fact, a good example, you've probably experienced this driving a car is if you're driving a car and all of a sudden you start looking at something and all of a sudden you look back and you've swerved to the right or you looked at something to the right and you found yourself swerving to the left you know um, you can't walk a straight path looking to the left or right is really what this verse is saying you and you can train your eyes to look straight ahead don't don't look other places look like this says look straight ahead down God's path why? Because otherwise, the lust of the eyes, we found out some of those verses last program, the lust of the eyes will keep you looking the wrong way. And then you start heading the wrong, the wrong way. Solomon had something to say about this. Let me show you what he said in uh, Ecclesiastes 1.8. Ecclesiastes 1.8, all things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye, look what he says about the eye and the ear now. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The eye is not satisfied, and the ear is uh, not filled with hearing. So in other words, this is saying, and by the way, this is two of your physical senses here that you can control part of your body, sight and hearing here. Uh, it says the eye is not satisfied. You know what that means? I want to see more. I want to see more. It, it, can, it can easily uh, gravitate to looking at the wrong thing and then, oh, I want to see more. 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 Whether it could be the wrong things you're watching on television or going to a movie or watching on the internet or, or out in public, you keep saying, oh, I want to see more. I want to see more. I want to see more. The eye is not satisfied, this says, nor the ear filled. In other words, the ear wants to hear more, wants to hear. This is how a lot of things, a lot of people become gossipers because tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. They hear and hear and hear and get filled up with it. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. They become a gossiper based on what they hear. So remember, we're talking about the fruit of self-control. God has given you his self-control. In essence, his self-control gives you the upper hand over your body, over your physical senses. God's self-control gives you the ability to control your senses, your desires, and your appetites. And we also see this same, same self-control that we've been looking at in Galatians. We all see, uh, also see it mentioned over in 2 Timothy. So let's turn over there, talking about you can control your body. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. If you look up this word sound mind, the Greek says discipline. That is, in other words, what does it mean by discipline? That is self-control. So that's what the Greek says, self-control. So God has given us self-control. If it's, if it's self-control given by God, then it would be God-infused self-control, <laughs> right? This isn't human self-control. This is God's self-control, heaven's self-control He put in us. So this says that God is the one who gives us, it says power. So that's a spirit of God's power. And love, that's a spirit of God's love. And self-control, that's a spirit of God's self-control. Uh, in program, uh, what was it, program 201, I think it was, that we looked at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 28. I want to go back there a minute since we're talking about you. God has enabled you to control your body. He's given you power, self-control over your body. Uh, let's go back to Genesis um, and let's just see. Yeah, Genesis 1, 26 and 28. Genesis 1, 26, God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them... Of course, that's male and female when you go on reading. But let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. I want you to underline over all the earth. All the earth. Remember, you and I were made from the dust of the earth. So he said, man, you now have dominion over all the earth. That would include all the dust of the earth, which sounds like that would include your body, right? So let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish, the fowl, the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So, verse 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of him, God created them male and female. So that's the only two genders there are. You can, you can try and whitewash that. You can try and do whatever you want to try and do. And, and I'm not being mean or anything at all. I'm just telling you what God says. God happens to be smarter than we are. Our creator happens to know what genders he made. And this is two male and female created them. He made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. All right. So verse 28, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish, over the fowl. Now watch this. Over every living thing that moves on the earth. Hmm. So God made us like him, verse 26 says, and then he told us we have dominion over all the earth. Are we on the earth? Would that include then our bodies? Well, then he said in verse 28, over every living thing. Remember, we saw when we looked at this back in that previous program that every living thing would include bacteria. It would include viruses. Those are living things, organisms, things. So we have dominion over uh, cancer. We have dominion over viruses. I don't care if it's a man-made virus or just a, a devil-made virus. They're all made by the devil. But you have dominion, you have authority over everything, look what it says right here, that moves on the earth. You know what the Lord told me one time? He said, your body is a living thing that moves on the earth. It's part of the earth, part of the dust of the earth that I made it from. So you have dominion over your body, which is a living thing. Remember over in James chapter 2, 26, when he was talking about faith? So... Uh, he says, faith without works is dead. So likewise, uh, the body without the spirit is dead. So the spirit is you. The body is not a living thing if you're not in it. But it is a thing. It's a living thing when you're in it and you have dominion over every living thing. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 7 says, when we leave the body and go to join the Lord, our body returns to the dust. It says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Uh, 
1 Corinthians 9, 27, Paul calls our body an it. So the body is a living thing that you have dominion over. It is an it. Um, um, and I just wanted you to see this because if God gave me dominion over, like it says here in Genesis, every living thing and over all the earth, then I can control my body and you can control your body. You know, I just quoted um, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. We'll go back over there in just a second because I want you to see some more that Paul said. But right here in Genesis 1, 26, God says, you have dominion over every living thing on the earth. That means you can control your body. It means you can control what it eats. Listen, you can control how it sleeps. Oh, brother, I have a sleep disorder. Oh, so you're letting your body, your emotions, you're letting things in the world tell you how you're going to sleep. No, you don't have to do that. You can use God's self-control. That's why we're learning this. God's self-control. You can control your body. You control what it eats. You control how it sleeps. You control where it goes. You don't have to let it go there or go there or go there where it's not supposed to go. You can control what it does. You know, I mean, you know, I could get mad at somebody and hit somebody or I could control my body and not let it hit somebody. Right. You can control what it does. You are the eternal being on the inside. You're the spirit man and you control the body. In fact, you can keep it well. I'm talking about free from sickness. You can keep it from eating too much and getting fat. You can make it exercise. You can do those things with what? God's self-control. Remember, it's not natural human control. It's God's self-control. So let's go back over where I said a minute ago, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, where Paul makes a statement about his body, calling it a it. That's why you and I have dominion over every living thing. Our bodies are a thing. They're an it. So body, uh, Paul, about the body in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, I keep under my body, I bring it under subjection. So the body is not you. The body's not Paul. He said, I, I keep under my body, I bring it. It's the house I live in. Remember 2 Corinthians 5, 1, he calls our, earthly, our body our earthly house. It's the house we live in when we're here. He said, I keep under my body, I bring it under subjection. So he says, I, I keep under, I bring it. Does that sound like he could control his body? Does it sound like you and I can control our body? Absolutely. The words here, he says, I keep under, that's really a weak translation in the King James here. It means uh, to hit under the eye. It means to buff it. It means to disable, now listen, because we're talking about controlling the body, to subdue one's passions. Hmm. So this is showing us that we don't have to play patty cake with our body. In fact, I'm going to read some other translations before we run out of time here. But he's talking about using God's self-control to control the body, the human body, and the passions, and the five physical senses that we've already discussed in the last couple programs. So we do not have to play around and just yield to our body and what it sees and hears and smells and tastes and feels. No, we, we can control our body. Listen to some other translations here. The Amplified says, but like a boxer, I buffet my body. Handle it roughly, discipline it by hardships, and subdue it. Did you hear that? Remember, have dominion, we saw in Genesis 1, 26 and 28, and subdue the earth. So that means you can subdue your body, you can control your body. Uh, the Good News translation says this, um, I harden my body with blows, and bring it under complete control. I can control my body. You can control your body. The NIV, I beat my body and make it my slave. Hmm. Um, the Living Bible, like an athlete, I punish my body, treating it roughly, training it to do what it should, not what it wants to do. 
See, our, our body, our bodies, the, what your eyes may want to see something, may want to hear something, taste something, uh, smell something. Uh, the five physical senses may want to do something, but you can train it to do what it should, not what it wants. God's Word to the Nations Bible says, I toughen my body with punches and make it my slave so that I will not be disqualified. <laughs> wow. Well, we're out of time again, so I'm going to have to stop, but I want to get back into this part because there's another part of this that's really going to help liberate you or liberate others if you get to share it with them as well. So make sure you join us next program about uh, we can control our bodies. We don't have to let our bodies control us, what they eat, what they do, what, no matter what, we are in control if we understand we have dominion and we can subdue them with God's self-control. All right, well, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, partners, for supporting us financially. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. You'll help us reach people like our partners helped us reach you. We love you, call you blessed. Until next program, have a Jesus-filled day. Bye-bye. Do you know yourself, who you really are? Not the natural, carnal person that the world says you are, but the saved, word-filled, Holy Spirit-empowered believer that you really are in the eyes of God. At times, each of us has struggled with our identity, ability, and purpose in our lives as believers. But God's Word is filled with His descriptions of who you really are in Him. In this two-part scripture recording, you will hear Dr. Hutton quote all the Bible scriptures about who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what you can do in Christ. In Him scriptures will help you build and strengthen the very foundations of your faith, enabling you to believe and therefore speak all that God has created you to be, to have, and to do, not in your own power, but in Him. To order In Him scriptures, go to larryhutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, Go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others you'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org or you can call 888-887-WORD.